Okay, everybody. So today I want to talk to you guys about uh, taking great photos for your practice. And more specifically, I want to talk about uh, DSLRs and the iPhone and the major differences and the pros and cons of each. So why should you take pictures, high quality photos for your practice? It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, the reason we take high quality photos for the practice is so that you have um, basically ammo that you can give these patients or the parents um, so that they can face, they can post the pictures on Facebook that they're proud of. And so that's why we do the high quality photos. And uh, it gives them something to promote. Uh, people always want to promote something that makes them look good. Okay, another uh, reason is because other practices will do the same thing. If you guys have a mutual patient with a, an orthodontist or a dentist, um, then you guys, you can cross promote your pictures. For instance, uh, I work for a orthodontist office and what I do is whenever we have a patient or mutual patient of a cosmetic dentist, um, say that the patient needs bonding work. Well, right after the, they get a debanding, the patient will take a picture of a before. Uh, you know, with the braces off uh, before the bonding and then have them go get the bonding and then when they come back I'll take another picture of the final picture which is the final product which that way I can get a very sharp contrast between before and after pictures something that's very uh, a wow factor if you will and then uh, I give a copy to the other practice so that they can promote it themselves and so I'm basically getting it in front of eyeballs that I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't be able to get with my following or with the practices following. So I'm basically piggybacking off of their followers. So not only am I uh, getting it in front of our followers, but it's also going in front of their followers and vice versa. Okay, and the third reason is because you want high quality portraits that you can hang or advertise in magazines. Uh, when I say hang, I mean like hang in the office, like on the walls or in a binder or in, uh, for the waiting room so that patients can, or potential patients can um, look through it to get an idea of what kind of work you can do. And uh, if you want to put it in a magazine, you can do that too. But for the most part, we're putting all our, our pictures on Facebook because that's the biggest bang for the buck. That's the most effective. And in some cases, it's, it's free. So, all right, so let's talk about um, cameras. So on the left-hand side, we have the Sony a6000, and on the right side, we just have an iPhone. Uh, that's an 8, I believe. It can be an iPhone 10 if you want, if you choose to do that. Um, so the pros and cons of the a6000, we'll go over the pros. Um, it has great low-light capabilities. This camera has a bigger sensor in the camera, so it lets in more light, so it handles light very well. Uh, it stores raw images. Now the iPhone 10 can store raw images, but they're a different kind of file, and it's not uh, the typical file that's used as a raw image, or as a raw a file. So, and with a raw image, what that means is basically that the camera will take as, mu take as much information and then let you decide on what it needs, whether it needs to be brightened up, maybe the exposure needs to be adjusted, maybe the saturation needs to be adjusted. And so, but most, most point and shoots and iPhones do that for you. And so there's a loss in quality there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, consistency. So this is one of the big differences that you'll find in between these two. Um, so whenever you use a DSLR, you can make it, you can set it up to have certain settings, a certain aperture, a certain, um, a certain aperture, a certain ISO, uh, focus range, things like that. And with an iPhone, you can't really do that. Every time you open up the camera app, you start all over with, with uh, new settings. And that can be a pain in the butt if you're in a, in a bind. Storage capabilities. So, with a DSLR, you can upgrade to all the way up to like I think 128 gigabytes uh, without, <coughs> excuse me, without increasing um, uh, the price. For instance, 
an iPhone, if you wanted to get like 128 gigabytes, I think at the highest you can get is 256, but if you want to get that 256, you're looking at like $1,500 or something like that. With a camera, if you're just buying the hard disk, so it's you know anywhere from 30 bucks to uh, 100 bucks. Um, and the storage capability allows you to um, easily transfer the files to and from the computer. All you have to do is plug it in. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to do any of that stuff. So, um, so let's talk about the iPhone for a little bit here. This is the 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 biggest probably the downside of the iPhone, and that's bad low light capabilities. Um, it can't really do well in offices because of the light. You, now you can compensate by getting two light fixtures that are stationary that constantly uh, shine light on the subject and then you can get a shot like that. But that's uh, that requires an added expense. Uh, it requires more real estate and then you have, to, you have to worry about cables and wires and everything in the way and then you have to get people in there. It just, it's just a big mess. All right, settings are not constant like I was talking about talking about before. Uh, every time you open up the camera app, there the settings are back to zero. Everything's back to zero, and you have to constantly adjust for exposure and light. And and when you're doing that, the 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 phone may not operate as you anticipate. I've noticed when I use my iPhone 7 Plus that it doesn't always um, focus when I want it to, and it's it, it's, it's a computer, so you have to. It has bugs and stuff that you have to work with, which is a pain in the butt. Uh, file transfer problem. Uh, I think I touched on this a little bit. Um, so the file transfer problem. If you want to transfer the files from an iPhone to the computer, you have to plug it in, or you can do um, a uh, what's AirDrop. That's what it's called, where you basically it's like Bluetooth technology. Um, near, it's called NFC, that's what it is, Near Field Communication. And you can do that, but then the phone has to be synced with the computer, and having multiple phones connect to one computer is a hassle, and transferring it with just a cable can be a problem, because uh, if you have a Mac computer, then if you're trying to transfer it off of one phone, it always has to be that certain phone, or else it'll erase everything if you try to, to sync it up with another phone. And that's a problem that I think that Apple is... As, uh, always been Apple iPhone downfall. Uh, last is the low megapixel. Um, now the iPhone 8 has 12 megapixels and the DSLR has 24. So when that comes into play is whenever you go into crop a photo, an image, as you zoom in you lose clarity and uh, sharpness of the image. And I'll demonstrate in the, in the next photo. So on the left hand side we have a picture taken with a flash and this as you can see is very clear. The skin tone is even, no shadows, uh, there's no glare and that's because a flash will even the light out and um, compensate for light where there's no light as far as shadows are concerned. The background is a nice, nice bouquet and that's what you want for these images because they're portraits. So. On the right hand side is an, an image taken in the same spot. Now this camera, as you can see, it doesn't take care of the light. As these are both zoomed in, as you can see, the one on the right, it starts to break apart when you start to zoom in and crop. And you lose the detail of around the skin, the hair. If you look at the one on the right, it looks like there's heat coming off their head and you can see the waves kind of like you can on, on a very hot asphalt road. So, and the background isn't as clear, doesn't have a clear bouquet. And you can see, I mean, there's subtle differences. I mean, it's a big difference, obviously. But um, yeah, so that's the difference between an iPhone and a DSLR. Now, I could probably fix it up a little bit with an iPhone if I got some lights, but like I said before, that requires a lot of real estate to handle. All right, now this is probably your bread and butter if you're gonna be uh, um, advertising this your photos on Facebook, which I highly recommend. Um, the first photo here, you can see in the top right hand corner, that's a actually taken by a Canon PowerShot, and that was a 12 megapixel camera. Again, the sensor isn't that great, so you can tell the difference in the light. 
just by having that bigger sensor and having a better lens. So what we did here was just to, to uh, make it more dramatic, it was I used a kind of like a, a crappier camera and I made the first picture like, oh, she doesn't want to be here, this picture's horrible. And then I, I jumped and I used the DSLR to make it, um, make her pop out like, hey, this is the result that we could pop, we can give you. So that's a, a major tool that we use in the office. Now these are just single portraits without the doctor. Again, on the left hand side, notice how our skin tone is nice and even. There are really no shadows. You can see the, the sharpness in our hair. Um, the bouquet in the background is really nice. And on the right hand side is uh, with an iPhone. I don't know what what version of iPhone, but uh, this is a recent, so I'm assuming that it's like an 8 or a 10. Now you can tell it's a clear difference. And this is, I should explain something. This, the picture on the right with the DSLR is not just the lens. It has to do with the, uh, I'm sorry, it's not just the the flash, it has to do with the lens quality too. You know, you're getting a camera in the thousand dollar range, you're gonna have better components versus a little tiny camera that's in the iPhone, okay? All right, so this is what you need for a the setup that to use to get those picture quality that you that I just showed you. Um, you're gonna need the, the body of the A6000. Now this camera came out in 2014, so the price went down, but it still competes against top cameras today because this is a mirrorless camera. And mirrorless means that they're just less moving parts. There's no reflective mirror in the, inside the camera to reflect the image, which it doesn't distort the image, it just makes it lighter to carry around. So this camera is actually about the size of an iPhone, an iPhone 7 Plus. Um, next is you're gonna need a lens. Since this body of the camera does not come with a lens, you wanna get the one, you wanna get this Sony, um, it's called a Sony uh, E 35 millimeter, and it has opt optical stabilization in it. Then you go to the, the flash, which is 8490, 84 and this can set up be set up automatic and in a later video I'm going to show you guys how to set your camera up and use it for uh, photos in the office and last and but not least the 64 gigabytes now you don't have to get a 64 gigabyte you can get like a 32 or 16 it'll be cheaper and all this totaled up gets you to $1059.90 and that's with tax and I'll show you how I got that uh, in the next slide and you can see compared to the iPhone 10 that's the latest iPhone out there it's a thousand dollars and that's not including tax and that's not including lights um, cables that you might have to get so um, yeah so as you can see it's it's a little bit more than the iPhone but it's well worth the price difference and this is what and where you need to buy it um, you're gonna buy all this stuff at BH photo and I'm not affiliated with BH Photo, but I'm a photographer, that's my hobby, and BH Photo has always been a great company, and I always recommend them to anybody that's interested in photography or, or video, and that's because their customer service is great. They're the only uh, store that offers a 30-day money back, if you want, 30-day return policy. Everybody else is like 15 days, like Best Buy, 15 days. Um, and um, they're the only ones that don't charge sales tax. So remember that. That's, that was big for me. Um, so here, just a list. All you gotta do is type this, the, the camera name into the BH photo search engine and the Sony name, the Godox name, SanDisk, and it'll pop it up, put it in the cart, buy it, whatever. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, look for another video coming from me to show you how to set it up and how you to get yourself up and running with the camera and how to incorporate it into your office. So if you guys find this, found that this video was of value to you, go ahead and like it. Uh, smash that subscribe button. Uh, and if this is on Facebook, go ahead and share it and follow us so that we can give you more videos. So I hope this helps. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry if it, it took a little bit longer than you expected, but I hope you got some out of it. So thank you guys. Have a good day.